All right, the last game in the no Belmont era of the Castlevania timeline. After this, we're actually going to be jumping into the future of the timeline. But for now, let's travel back to 1944, where a certain German Führer or dictator was in control and World War II was still a thing. Welcome to my re-review of Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. Enjoy the show. Hello everyone and welcome back to my revisit to the Castlevania timeline. Tonight's game is the last of the era where we follow the Morris family. Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. Portrait of Ruin is a 2D Metroidvania released in December of 2006 for the Nintendo DS. It follows Jonathan Morris, the son of John Morris from Bloodline, and young sorceress Charlotte Allen, who is actually a long-distant relative to the Belnades clan. So wait, this brings up a... very, very weird question. Since these two are relatives to Trevor and Sypha, if Jonathan and Charlotte were to bang, would that technically count as incest? I know they're distant relatives of the two with different last names with each other, so it's possible it will most likely not count as incest, but that's still something to consider. What? <laughs> whatever. With that odd question out of the way, here's another question. Is Portrait of Ruin any good? And is it something I can recommend to you? Let's find out. So Portrait's plot opens up with the resurrection of Dracula's castle. Not by Dracula himself, but by another vampire who goes by the name of Brawner. Shortly after entering the castle, we meet a ghost who Jonathan and Charlotte called Wynne, and Wynne tells us that Brawner used special paintings to control the castle's power. Well, I guess Konami just looked at Super Mario 64 and went like, let's center the next DS Castlevania game around portraits. Anyways, after defeating the Dullahan boss, we meet a girl named Loretta, who is said to be one of Bronner's daughters, try saying that five times fast, and Loretta tells Jonathan and Charlotte that they marginally weakened Bronner's power over the castle. Now after the second portrait, we meet Bronner himself and one of his other daughters, this time Stella, and Bronner denies any plot to resurrect Dracula, saying that he holds no allegiance to the Vampire Lord due to his continuous failures. Now eventually, the monster slaying duo encounters death, who is under the belief that Dracula is back, only to be told otherwise. So Death came up with a plan to use Jonathan and Charlotte for his own needs. After encountering Stella in the Tower of Death, she drops a pendant, and after returning to win, he revealed himself to be the ghost of Eric Lacar from the previous game Bloodlines, is that Stella and Loretta are his daughters, not Bronner's. And after defeating Death, Jonathan and Charlotte found a spell called Sanctuary, which is said to have the ability to dispel vampirism and allows the dead to rest in peace. So after curing Stella and Loretta, the two tell Jonathan that they are able to awaken the dormant power of the vampire killer, although it could be proven fatal since much like John from Bloodlines, Jonathan is not a direct descendant of the Belmonts. Now you have the option to not do this right away and grind up to make this fight a complete joke, or you can go in head first and fight the Whip's memory, which is in the form of Richter Belmont. After defeating the Whip's memory, we move on to Bronner, and it's death that steals our kill, thus destroying the seal to Dracula's throne room. And also, Drac is back, so we all know the standard Castlevania shtick. Drac is back, so we whack his crack. Alright, so we're familiar with this song and dance before. Die, monster, etc, etc. Hold up. Death? So, do I have to fight him first? Wait... I have to fight both of them? Bring it on, bitches! Yeah, and the biggest final boss plot twist in the Castlevania series, we have to fight not only Dracula, but Death as well. This... is honestly pretty epic, not gonna lie. 
fight two of the most iconic villains in the entire franchise at once is honestly... Hard as hell, I'll admit, but actually pretty cool. Anyways, Dracula absorbs death, we kill Dracula, and Castlevania crumbles to the ground. With his soul no longer bound to the castle, Eric gives one last goodbye to his daughters before fading from the earth and tells them not to blame themselves. And the adventure then ends, with the four of them looking for the merchant Vincent, who they believe to be trapped underneath all the rubble of Castlevania, but he was just trying to catch up with them, ending Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. So, that was Portrait's plot. Overall, this is definitely one of the most unique Castlevania stories, where for a good chunk of the game, much like with other Metroidvanias and even some of the 3D Castlevania games, Dracula wasn't present until the final act of the game. I think the characters are actually pretty good. Jonathan, while being a hothead most of the time, really bounces off with Charlotte's more intelligent nature as the brains of the duo, and I really find their interactions to be pretty great. Brawner was a pretty good pseudo big bad before death kills him. Wind slash Eric is alright, same thing with Stella and Loretta. But with the story done, let's move on to gameplay. Gameplay of Portrait has us in control of Jonathan Morris and Charlotte Allen, and name of the game is Jump, Attack, Explore, and Die. I can certainly say that after playing through Order of Ecclesia, Portrait is definitely easier by a long shot. Now, Portrait brings another unique gimmick to the series the partner system. We are able to freely switch between Jonathan and Charlotte to best utilize their abilities, and we can even combine their powers for combo attack. The only downside I find with exploring the environments is that the equipment tends to be unique to only one of the two characters. Now, of course this wouldn't be a Metroidvania game without extra playable characters, the most unique of which is called Sisters Mode, where we play as both Stella and Loretta, and their campaign takes place in 1942 two years prior to Portrait's main plot, where the two tried to save Eric. Now, much like Symphony of the Night, we could play as Richter Belmont, who is also accompanied by Maria Renard, this time her Rondo of Blood Incarnation, which is a bit odd. You'd think that they would use, you know, her more experienced Symphony of the Night incarnation instead of this. But anyways, much like the four previous characters, Richter and Maria also utilize the partner system. So overall, Portra is definitely easier compared to Ecclesia, and the overall gameplay is actually pretty great. Visually, I think it still holds up pretty well. Much like Ecclesia, environments look wonderful, enemy and bosses look great, and character sprites are also pretty great looking. I heard people are not a big fan of the anime-like character portraits, but I find them to be rel relatively harmless to be honest. I mostly like Charlotte's pissed off expression. That face. You can easily use that for a meme. OST, I mean come on, it's a Metroidvania game, of course the OST is going to be great. Sure, Bloodline Bequeath is just a redone version of Divine Bloodlines, but I still find it to be a bop. And much like what I said about Ecclesia's OST, for the DS, it sounds pretty great. I love Portrait's overall OST. It sounds great, and it definitely gets me into the monster slaying mood. Now, let's recap. I think the story is pretty great, gameplay is really great, visually it's magnificent, and OST, I love it. So here are my final thoughts. Overall, I had a more pleasant time with Portrait. From amazing characters, great and unique gameplay, as well as a pretty good OST, Portrait is definitely a keeper. Now if only we get to face against the Third Reich and see if the Vampire Killer can take down the tank. Overall, Castlevania Portrait of Ruin gets my score of a 9 out of 10. But as always, I want to know from you all. What did you think of Portrait of Ruin? Did you play it and is it something you would recommend to a friend? Leave your answers and more down in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and while you're here consider subscribing and turn on the bell to be notified whenever I make a new video. As always, my social media links are down below. I've been Howard Kid, and I will see you all next time when we jump ahead into the future, into the year 2035, in the events of the next game, Castlevania Aria of Sorrow for the Game Boy Advance. Till then, you all take care.